The Nikki Glazer Podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer Podcast. I'm here with Brian Frangie. Hello. Noah. Hello. In Arizona. Uh, mm-hmm. We um, we're here. We're doing it. Oh my New gosh. week of shows. Oh my god! How did how, <laughs> how do, far we've come? How, how do, do we, we do keep it? Making it every week. How do we? Keep- <laughs> 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 I was just talking to someone about doing a podcast and how even like you think doing something once a week will be like oh it's just once a week that's like easy but even once a week catches up to you and you go oh my god again two times mm-hmm. a week I, li- I like doing multiple times a week because it feels like it never goes away and you never have that thing of like oh fuck i gotta do that thing like it's just it's always yeah. right it's more ever present four times a week was fucking bananas when we used yeah. to do that Noah. i don't know how we did that <laughs> how did we do that i mean well that started during covid right no, well, we did, we used to do our radio show for two hours, four days a week, from <laughs> ten to twelve Eastern That's every wild. single day. Yeah, That's just and, a full time job. And that was not something you could pre-record, right? Like we just mm-hmm. had to live. do it. Non negosh had to do it. That's how I met Noah. In case uh, besties don't know, um, was at Sirius XM, and um, she's my producer. And uh, we met early January 2018, 2018, baby. Oh my God, it was so long ago. <laughs> 2018 is like, is legit long ago now. 2018 That's my favorite felt so, year. It was the best year. It was the that year was I did Dancing with the year, Stars. Yeah. It, I loved that year. I was terribly depressed in January when we were starting the show. I was going through a really bad bout. And then I started um. Transcendental Meditation. And then that really helped. And then it was just like a fun year of going to like... Starting the show, being excited about the show, still doing clubs, like starting to do pretty well in clubs, um, mm. really getting in back into the New York scene. I just moved back in January of 2018 to do the show from L.A. where I did Not Safe for a couple of years. And then, um, yeah, it was just like nightlife. All my friends were single. That sounds like a good Netflix series. All my friends were single. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. The uh, summer, that- all my friends were single. That, that does seem to be a trend amongst titles of shows now that they have to be like long sentences. Yes. <laughs> or sentence fragments, oh. really, I should say. The, the fragments. The year I that think... I was pretty. Um, mm-hmm. Nobody wants this. Uh, or or the, it's really like a three word title. It used to be one word titles or the blank. You have the Sopranos, the wire. Uh, and now it's like, nobody wants this. Sharp little objects, pretty little liars. Little fires yeah. everywhere, you know. It's like I, I think the name is trend. so crucial to oh, yeah, the success no. of a show. I can tell you if a show is going to succeed based on the name alone. But slow easily. horses, you wouldn't think that would be a good show, and I think it would be do better if it didn't have that name. To be honest with you, absolutely. Because I have I have not wanted to watch it because of the name, <laughs> and then people right. go, "No, it's actually great." And I thought it was going to be some kind of like Yellowstone thing. Yeah, yeah, like Western drama. Right. No, it's not that at all. Oh. I still haven't watched it, even though people tell me it's going to be great. And people tell me what it's about, and I don't believe them because of the name Slow Horses. Like, I there's know. no way it's about spies it's, in England. Yeah. It's, or Brita. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's isn't British? it about like a campaign? I don't know what it's about. I still am confused, actually, because I just think it's about what you're saying. It's like Kevin Costner must be in it. Obviously. There's galloping horses in slow motion, and that's I'm right. not interested. And that's what I have to watch <laughs> to get through the credits to get to the show. That's Let's talk right. about credits. Are there any was, credits you enjoy watching that you do not skip over? Well, the, the, a galloping horse in slow motion was actually the first ever movie ever made. Oh, yeah, you're right. Or animation. Yeah. <laughs> the right? first ever animation. Yeah. Well, no, it was the first movie. Yeah. Oh, I guess you're right. That's what people yeah. used to watch. It's crazy. It's uh, it's a, it's it's a fun thing to watch. I'll I'd watch a galloping horse. I've never been on a galloping horse. I don't think I've never galloped. I've definitely trotted, trotted, um, galloped, but never got tough. to gallop. I would love to just be ch- like looking behind me while I'm oh I'm being chased God. by someone, and I have oh to go he he like let's go faster. <laughs> oh, that'd be yeah. so fun. He he is that what you have to do? He he. <laughs> what do you go? Watcha watcha. What do you say? Uh, yeah. 
I think it's I yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, you're right. You're right. It might be. Um, yeah, that would be pretty fun to look behind you at someone chasing you and have to go fast or have a bow and arrow. Or on it's a horse. like a flirty look because you're like flirting with a, <laughs> another cowboy and you guys are like, yeah. It's, and you're gonna fall off the horse and then he's gonna like come to your rescue and hold you and then you make out. Yeah, and so, sometimes How, you okay. see that in reality shows where like people like have fun on a horse together, but it's always yes. slow because of because they're worried about lawsuits. Yes. Yes. Okay. How often do you think in real life two people tumble on each other? Like something goofy happens <laughs> and then they kiss after they tumble upon one another. I would say 0% of the time. Zero times yeah, zero. ever? I, I mean, I'm trying <laughs> to think of any meet cute where I... You, let's even talk about like you spill something and then like your hand hits the thing at the same time. And whoever mm-hmm. thought of that the first time for a rom-com, a brilliant person. I don't like yes. when like things become cliche and we make fun of them and we don't give credit when the first person who thought of it, brilliant. Like the first time you saw a girl drop a bunch of books and then he, she's like, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. And then they both, their hands touch on one of the books. That's a great yeah. moment. That's a great TV moment. It's just been done to death. When the was, first time the, was, when good. was the first one? Was that in the, what year do you think that I'm was? I'm sure someone could trace it for us. Yeah. Um, but that is like a, a thing that happens all the time, but I don't think it happens ever in real life. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a moment where, um, well, you, you literally know, fall on top of each other and you're on the ground. It, I just watched a movie two nights ago that had that happen in it. And it was, uh, it was a cute scene. I'm glad it happened, but it was mm-hmm. in, um, I really recommend it. It's called my old ass and it's on, um, Amazon <laughs> prime. You guys, it is so fucking good. The performances are great. It's just a, a realistic dialogue, realistic like acting. And then it's just, just I know you're going to like the whole movie, you're going to go, okay, really? Is this like the best movie? And then you just wait, wait for, <laughs> wait for it because you're going to feel emotions you haven't felt in a really long time. And there's going to be like answers about your life that you're like, you're just going to live a different life the next day. And then it'll wear off because it's been two days now and I'm, I'm back to being the person I was before, but for a day. <laughs> I was like, I need to be, I need to savor things more. It's just a really yeah. great movie. My old ass. It's starring Aubrey Plaza and then a little uh-huh. girl that was like, I guess created the cup song, which seems way too okay. Maisie old ago. Stella. Maisie Stella. Ama- she looks. By the way, if you want to know what Gen Z M looks like, even though you can go see it on our YouTube when she was on the the show. Yep. She looks oh, exactly yeah. like Maisie Stella, literally, oh. and she talks the same as her Maisie in the movie. Stella. Like they are the same person. They are the same person. I was. I. Oh yeah, was, Jesus. It was. Whoa. It was wild. Totally. Right. That is. That's Gen Z M. Gen Z M yeah. was in a movie and, with Albie wow. Plaza. They talk it. the same and act the same. It's like. Wait it's a second. Just, Gen Z M's name is Maisie Stella, and she's mm-hmm. a famous actor who has seven hundred thousand yes. <laughs> Instagram followers. She should have more, to be honest with you. She is yeah. so good and so cute. I fell in love with her in this movie. I just can't wait to ever meet her and be Cup like, song. you are so good. And then um, the little girl from the Sia music videos. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. This is making me depressed. Okay. So I don't know what the Cup song is. I don't know what the, the Cup CM... song. I didn't see Pitch Perfect, but it's in Pitch Perfect. You know, oh, they're okay. like, that's why someday you'll go away in a cup. They sing like a slow song and they're like, and then they flip cups around. And it's really impressive. Like they an go old faster folk and face, song faster. From colonial time? Anna Kendrick sings it. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah. I've been down this road before. And they're like doing the cups and they're flipping the cups around. I swear to God, okay. I don't know anything and else about it. I've never seen Pitch Perfect. Like a, like I know there's. Stomp. Yes, exactly. And okay. it becomes really rhythmic and like kind of hypnotizing and it's really cute and fun, but okay. I never learned it and I'd never seen Pitch Perfect and I know I should because I know it's like a seminal comedy classic, but I've just never seen it. So just, just lay off me, okay? Just lay on me and then kiss me as we <laughs> fall on top of each other. Um, but okay, so wait, let me just say the so Sia, the music videos, Chandelier. Uh huh. Okay. And then yes. Chandel. Oh, so the dancing girl. That little dancing girl. Okay, good. Oh, you know okay, that. Great, great, great. My great. mom the other night was like, I don't know, because I go, that's the little dancing girl, and by her her name is um. Oh damn it! I oh, used no. to know it. Chandelier. Her sister sings one of my favorite songs ever that I learned from Dancing with the Stars because she did a live performance of it on one of the nights I was kicked off. Every day I try, it's harder than the one before. I da da da. It's uh. I forget her name. Why am I? Um, I have her name if you want Ziegler? it. No. Yeah. Ziggler. Ma- Maddie, Maddie Ziggler. Zieg- yes, okay. there you go. And then her sister, something Ziggler, made this song called Every Day, and it is truly one of my favorite songs of all yes. time. Dolph. Um, 
And so Dolph, Z- yeah, her sister Dolph Ziggler. And then, um, <laughs> so Maddie Ziggler was the little amazing dancer in Chandelier. They did a trilogy and uh, Elastic Heart, which is my favorite of them, even though it made people uncomfortable because it seemed to be a little bit like old man and little girl dance yeah. together. And mm-hmm. they, she's That's almost the like naked and it's in the cage. And it's my yeah. favorite. If you're not perverted or I mean I don't think people who think it's perverted are perverted I just if you look at it through a lens of like these are her two selves battling right. it out um, good song yeah, them, her getting fingered at the end of it was a little took me out of it but you know <laughs> no, no, nothing nothing bad happens it's it's a really that that music video those music videos I watch all the time and then the other one is um, uh, the one that's da, 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 da. no that's Shakira but she's oh, like yeah. My hips don't lie no that I was singing Forever. It's, and it ever. sounds like that song, but it's uh I forget the name of it. But that one's really good too, but it's always just that little girl in a dirty house dancing or like at a mm-hmm. dirty setting and she's wearing like <laughs> kind of like bandages and stuff, but it Maddie yes. Ziegler is that was one of the, like I'm usually creeped out by children being really good at performing and being really able to summon like an emotional performance. I think it's just unsettling and makes me believe in like past lives or something. Yes. I just don't like it. I don't like it when little girls can sing too well or they yodel and they have too much emotion. I just and adults it must are crying. Be fake. Unless they have past lives, then that emotion you can't summon that emotion. When it's you're questionable. Sick. It's totally sure. questionable. You know or what's going they're on. just that good of performing, right? Like they don't need to access emotion. Like, because I think some actors don't even feel emotion. They just know how to like mimic it. You know what I mean? Right. Mm, like a robot. Like AI. Right. But Maddie Ziegler in the, in those, oh God, in those music videos, the choices she makes with her face and all the things she does, like it's so artistic. I get, I'm just boggled by it. And then she has, she has like a smaller role in this film, but I think her acting choices, there's this one scene where she's on the dock and she's just like talking to her friend and she just like coughs into her arm. And I'm like, did she think to cough like did she plan that cough or did she let it come out and just like was mm. like oh i have to cough and so my my character's gonna cough right now like it's shit like that that i fucking love like i love messy performances that are grounded in how people actually talk everyone knows that i already like that in dialogue anyway this movie nailed it and i really recommend you seeing it my old ass and then aubrey plaza is just fantastic in it and so yeah. funny and my dad like didn't know of her so, uh, Aubrey Plaza? No, and my dad was transfixed. Like he you could see, you know that thing that happens to all men with Aubrey Plaza where they're just kind of like, why am I so horny for her and I don't even know why? Like she's hot, but like there's something like she's like scares me. Like I saw that like yeah. happen to my dad. Dad, she's if you're listening, off. no offense. She's dangerous. Yeah, he was just like, I like wait, who is that? Like you could just see it. I was like, oh god, she's got that je ne sais quoi. Kavorka. Like that that qual- Is that the word? Well, it's a, well, that's like a Jewish thing that uh for men mostly mm. where you're She's you just, have the yeah you have that energy that aura what's it called about you the kavorka i think so am i wrong about this kavorka I like babaduk that. kavorka it's a there's a seinfeld episode is mm. where kramer has it well, okay yeah um you guys have some really good words mensch the is lore one of, my favorite of words. the animal it means yeah she's got it she's oh, got the kavorka yeah. Yeah, then. for sure and it's just, it's a great film. And then, um, and then I went, so I've been going over to my parents' house because Chris is out of town and I'm in St. Louis for four nights, which is absurd. I haven't been here that long for months and months, it feels. And so I've just got like my nights free. I'm not sitting around by myself. I'm not someone who would ever sit around by myself for a night. If that happens, things are going wrong and like I will just do bad behaviors. I don't, I don't want to be alone. So I go over to my parents' house as soon as I'm done with my day, because I truly don't know what I would do if I just sat, I just can't do it. And so I go over to my parents and we hang out and I just watch them um, make dinner or whatever. And then my mom and I were laughing last night because there was a, (laughs) there was an Alzheimer's ad. Like there was a medication ad for Alzheimer's, not laughing about that. But it was like this woman was talking about her her mother with Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever it is, whatever kind of dementia. And there's this Rick Salty is the the thing. And it was like, you know, my mom's uh, demeanor had changed. She was just angry all the time. And um, she was even cursing. And and, and, and I just knew something was up. And, And now her symptoms have completely gone down since Rick, Rick Salty. And I was like, I'll know when you have dementia because you'll stop cussing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of me taking my mom in and being like, 
Sir, she, her behavior has just changed so much. She's just behaving erratically. And they're like, the cursing and the viol- and the throwing and the yelling. And I'm like, it's all gone. <laughs> she's, she's really peaceful and, and measured. I think there's something wrong. Because it's like, I guess when people get dementia, they just get fucking nuts. That's why I love uh, R- Rasan's joke. Hirsch, Rasan Hirschberg. Is, am I being correct in saying his name? I don't know. I've, I never. I always get his name wrong. You got to know who Rasan is. I mean, yeah, I don't. He had a, a YouTube special that came out yeah, last. But he year. has a brilliant joke that I've quoted on here before about like if you're racist or have any bigotry in your heart, get it sorted before you get senile because it's all <laughs> coming out. And like yeah. that is so funny to me. It's like that because it does. Like you get so you get crazy. You say weird things. Well, you lose um, your filter. Sometimes you get hypersexual. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. It's 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 not a it's not Hyper a good sexual. Vibe. I haven't heard of that one. I think they. I think some. Whoa. I think some men get uh, perverted, or women too, in in nursing homes. My dad had a what he. My dad performs at nursing homes, and one time he was playing guitar, and a woman just wheeled her wheelchair up and started like rubbing on his pants on the crotch area, like. I think he was playing guitar, so I don't really understand how that happened. But she, maybe she was rubbing her crotch. I kind of forget the story, but there was something really indecent going on while my dad was playing, and he just mm. had to laugh it off, you know. Yeah, and and keep on singing a uh, Neil Young song that they <laughs> probably were like, "Oh, this old racket, the new age <laughs> music." <laughs> yeah, that part of your brain that that stops you from doing things just stops working, and then you can't your your core animalistic tendencies come through. Well, like okay. I was thinking about this because I am trying to make a point on stage about how like no one can really tell if they're like you can't you can't really predict what your brain is ever going to do. You think, you know, but because there's no free will, you really don't know what your brain is up to. You can only go based on like how you have behaved in the past and kind of you're gambling all the time with what your brain will say. We've all had moments where it's like, what if I just screamed something right now that's really fucked up and you're like whoa the only thing stopping me from doing it is doing it like it's Mm -hmm. in my brain like what if i just did it and you kind of like freak out unwanted thought syndrome like and i was i'm trying to prove this point on stage that it makes people really uncomfortable is that like i'm not going to give away the joke but it's like you don't know that you wouldn't do this really fucked up thing and i don't know that i wouldn't do it either so i just don't put myself in circumstances where i would ever be able to do that thing even though I know I don't want to do that thing, I'm just scared my brain might be like, do it, you know? It's right. why I don't own a gun. It's why I don't... And and the yeah. audience kind of gets it, but the other day I was like, I really made a good point. I was like... And I kind of didn't steal it from Louis' show, but I definitely... It's 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 why it popped into my head. And I would never give myself credit You're for thinking of it. But by- yeah, but it's it's kind of... It would be like... I wouldn't be able to put this in anything, I don't think. But it's a, You're it's, inspired it's a good to point steal he it. made. Yes, I was inspired to steal from him. I was inspired to do something naughty in front of yes. everyone. <laughs> and so I, um, there's, in one of his shows, he's with Parker Posey on a date and she runs, they run up to the top of this building mm. and she's like on the very ledge of it. And he's like, what are you doing? Come back. And she's like, I'm not going to jump. And he's like, just come back. And she's like, but I know how to not move an inch over and I trust that I'm not going to do it. You don't go over to the edge because you don't trust yourself. And I really loved that moment because it's true. Like, we all know, na- like, there's no way if you're on a building that there's no wind, active wind or anything that you're just going to, like, fall over the ledge. Yet none of us will even get close enough for that to even be a possibility because there's a part of your brain that doesn't trust that you just won't. Right? Right. Or there's yeah. a part of your brain that doesn't trust that you won't trip for the first time just standing still as if that's ever happened to you before. So yeah. we all have it in us to not trust ourselves, but we, but that's a when good we talk thing about to not trust yeah. yourself that you you might trip because that's just an accident. You didn't mean to trip. I think that that profound Parker Posey moment, I think she's insane. She's, she's lacking any, <laughs> she's lacking a fear complex that allows totally. her to protect herself. I agree. Chris does not have that part of his brain either. We were in um, Philly this weekend and Okay, so Noah, you go to this hotel, you oh, get out of the Lord. car yes. at the lobby, right? Like the valet. You walk in through the valet, and this is the Four Seasons in Philly. Very much recommend anyone staying there if you have oh. a lot of money to spend and you want to go treat yourself to an amazing, amazing hotel. I've ever, ever second best hotel, second best. Hotel. It was my second best hotel too. What was your first? I don't want to say the first because I don't want people to flood it. 
Okay, well, we'll save it for after for intrusive thoughts. Yeah, that'll thoughts. be intrusive thoughts. I'll give you my recommendation for my best hotel, okay. which is for everyone's going <laughs> to so, go to now. So you walk in, and then you take an elevator to the lobby, which is commonplace. Sometimes the lobby's not on the same floor. Frequently, and you press a button. Yeah, yeah. And then you go up in the elevator, and you're not really paying attention to the lobby button, what floor it says. And then you shoot up into the sky <laughs> oh, 60 no. stories. Yeah. Six zero. Mm-hmm. And it is so, and you have a, it's a clear window looking out on the on off on Philly, mm-hmm. and you're going all the way up. You shoot up so fast, and it's dizzying. And then on the way down, it almost goes so fast you feel like you are falling at the speed of falling. Like it's slower than falling, but it's like it's it gives it's you a the remarkable willies. view. It's like Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator that Raw yes. Doll book. You really it's, do shoot up into space, and you're you're just overlooking Philly like you're the like you're Mufasa looking over your land. It's so cool. And then you go to your room, and you have to go down from the lobby because your room's like room fifty two. But I was like, Chris, mm-hmm. our room is on this fifty second floor. I was like, I think this is the highest I've ever sleep slept in my life, besides in college when I did. Well, 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 hot, <laughs> uh, but I think it was the highest I've ever been sleeping. Like, who? When have I ever slept at that elevation? That's insane. The pl- but, plane. Oh, fuck. yeah, yes, yeah Brian, the you got me, yeah, dude. The back door, you're plane. so right. <laughs> well, anyway, Chris, on the way down, I was like, "Do you feel anything in your bones, in your body? Is there any movement in your stomach? Is there any like tightness in your chest? Is there any tingling in your feet? Anything that you feel when you look down and we're going down?" And he said, "Nothing." And that is indication to me that he doesn't have the thing. Did you do you feel Willie? I've seen him do some fear, some fearless things that were uh yeah that were like I would never do that. Like remember when we were walking from between like the comedy store and the improv or something like yes! that. Yes. And th- that st- he was just walking in like the street basically in and the that street, street with is... his back to traffic. Yes. You guys, people do this all the time. What is I, I honestly what is wrong with you? If you if you are walking on a, a street and you don't have a lot of sidewalk space. Even if you have a lot of sidewalk space, there are people texting all the time that their car will just go up on the sidewalk or drunk. You guys always, always walk with your, never walk with your back to traffic coming at you. Always walk on the side so that you can see it coming so that you can dart out of the way if it comes at you. This is, I mean, I can't, Im- I can't believe how many families I see on Sunset Boulevard walking in a construction zone where there is cars going by at 40 to 50 miles an hour mm-hmm. right next to them with no sidewalk and children. Like I've seen like families from the Midwest with children walking on the side of the road. It is the most dangerous thing ever. Please, please besties, please walk on the side of the street so you can face the traffic. Don't ever run. If you go running, don't ever run with traffic. Don't bike with traffic. I mean, I guess you have to bike with traffic, but I, that's why I don't bike. I'm not doing it. I don't want my back to cars. Yeah, That's well, so yeah, scary. So, every few months, there's a story about some like professional basketball player who got hit by a car biking, and now they can't walk, and it's just like, <sighs> is that? It's is it worth it to bike? Is biking that great? But I think um, it is. Okay, we got to go to break. We'll co- we'll come back after this, and Brian has something to say. Yes, Brian. So I feel like there are some cities where there's a culture of um, pedestrian confidence that borderlines dangerous mm. where New there's York. there's like i was in well i was in boston this weekend and i just noticed and it was like around like the cambridge like the college campus areas and i just noticed that every single pedestrian would not like look to see like when they cross a crosswalk they wouldn't yeah. look to see if the car was going to actually stop they would just expect it to stop and sometimes not even look people were just like darting in and out of the streets Without looking. It, it does look cool when you aren't like <laughs> looking both ways. Like there's right. no question you look cool when you yeah. aren't super scared mm-hmm. and cautious. But is it worth it? Is it worth it? Or do you also have your backpack on one shoulder? Do you also not wear a seatbelt? <laughs> do you also not wear a helmet? Like is looking cool and maybe not scared worth you? Get, like I also I, think that like worth what, it. what Brian experienced being in like a big city in Boston mm-hmm. when I used to live in Brooklyn, like I just got so desensitized to everything. Yes. I just knew how it worked. And I was yes. like, Oh, I know I'm not going to get hit by this truck. At least 
Not today. <laughs> I'm actually glad that I left New York City because I was starting to get like that. My parents would come visit and go, Nikki, what are you doing? Like, and I would yeah. just be like, the car would c- pass and my nose hair would like, there'd be like a, <laughs> the tiniest hair on my chin would like graze the cab that came by. And that was okay because I didn't get hit by it. I knew, I knew how close I was getting. And you're just playing with fire constantly. And it's like, you're going to get, it's almost like how I felt when I quit drinking. Like I would flirt with DUIs, right? Like you would just go, oh, I've only had one drink or two or it's been enough hours since my third drink that and just i was getting just a little bit too brazen and then that's when you get fucking caught and and yeah. and also i i know i'm gonna have to die someday i just don't want to go in a miserable way and can i just say that getting hit by a car while you're on a bike or walking mm. is a terrible mangled way to die. It's just you don't want to go that way. Take risks elsewhere. Smoke cigarettes. I don't care. Like mm. that's like that's shitty too. But at least it's not like your bones are all twisted and like all like I, it's just. I'm sorry if this is triggering anyone who lost someone in in that kind of way. But it's just. It's just think about the way you well, want to go. Sometimes it's and not then your fault. You, you know, don't want to go. I read a yeah. story like there was this man who was just like crossing the street to go to his car to go to work. It was like six mm-hmm. o'clock in the morning, and someone just blew through a light and killed them. Yeah, and it's like, what do you? You, oh. you just can't avoid it sometimes. But that's why you look both ways all the time. If if you're being as yeah, cautious was, as you can be. There was mm-hmm. a guy, have you ever seen the picture? I mean, I'm on Reddit and I see last images all the time of people. And there's one that always comes up and it's a man who lost his life. I think it was last year. He saw a group of ducklings crossing the road and he wanted to help safely get them there. And his daughter was filming him, oh like be God. cute with these ducklings. And you see the car that runs over him and kills him as it's turning and blowing through this stoplight. And you see it in the picture that she took of her dad. And he's like shuffling these little ducklings. So cute. And you know what happened next. It's obviously the last image because that's the subreddit. But it's like, yeah, sometimes you're just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's just. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why you got to watch my old ass because you're going to learn that you just got (laughs) to enjoy everything while you have it. Yeah, and then you get hit by the car and you're mangled, and then the person comes out and trips and falls on top of you and starts kissing you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was actually thinking this weekend because someone asked me if I'd ever fainted, and when I I did faint, I fainted once in my life, and when I fainted, I had like a dream, and it was awesome. Like, and my body was going through shock, and it was like my body was passing out, so my body was not healthy, but like I went to a really awesome place in my brain. And so I was thinking last night on my drive home from my parents because the roads were slick and I sometimes let my mind wander like, what if something happens? I'm like, I hope that I just go to the same place that I did the last time my body was like, we need to shut down. Like I'm in an ocean and I'm floating and the waves are lapping up and I'm just like, fl- and then I wake up and I'm like, <gasps> and uh, you know, it's there's a fucking tube down my throat and stuff that would be horrifying. But at least I hope that when I go, it's like a very peaceful, like I, I'm not with it. Well, some say that that's the the purpose of DMT releasing in your brain is so that it calms you and puts you in a place where you don't even care what's happening. Right, right. I oh, mean, God. some also say that that's like your transition into the next dimension, but I think more so it's just like a, you know, a chemical response to death that allows the body to... It is evolutionarily important for us to die so that we can continue reproducing and having our genes advance to be more appropriate for the you know the nature so if you don't right. die then you just have a bunch of like obsolete people walking around so there is a reason for nature to provide a calming effect for you to accept death when it happens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. otherwise we'd have these you know people the uh, iphone threes walking around but maybe brian it's because death is peaceful and it's a good thing and Whoa, it's no. maybe it's not lying to you and anesthetizing you from the horror of it. Maybe it actually is good. And that is what you're feeling is so like maybe, a good thing. So is that That's why I guess like a part of it, if, if someone dies like abruptly, like gets hit by a car or something, that's mm-hmm. why it's so tragic because they didn't really have the chance to they let all that kick in. Hit at the end. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's the kind of the way i want to go there is a part of me that does want that dmt release before i go because i've heard of it and it would be nice to know like oh this is the end but there's also a part of me that just wants a bridge to fall on me because it's like the fastest of, or like to be in a submarine and go 
you know, really quick. No. But mm-hmm. apparently in that submarine, it wasn't that quick. And it was probably really horrifying. <laughs> and they probably just sunk and sunk and sunk until it finally was like. <laughs> um, and dying with other people. Like no, watching them panic and stuff. No thanks. no, thanks. I'd be like, calm down. We Didn't you guys know we had to do this eventually? I would be like the one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I always have wanted to work on a joke about being in a plane crash and trying to figure out how to get on the Bo- Boingo Wi-Fi to say goodbye to my parents <laughs> and having to like think of, like change my password and be like enter a new password. I'm like, they're not matching and I'm jostling around like, oh, God, I already used that fucking dead dog's name. And okay, I'll do a, a question mark and an exclamation point and like how you have to like click like the accept cookies and like all the things and like and you look at their working. in-flight entertainment and you're like, okay, should I use my status or should I just buy it? And you go, ah, $8 and it's like... It's that would be just a, such a funny panic as you're trying to say goodbye and you just go, I guess I'm just not gonna like, I guess I'm just not gonna. Um, $29 but, yeah. for a flight pass is a lot to ask to just say goodbye to your family. It's my mom. I know that my mom would not want it that way. Nikki, you spent uh, I tw- know, <laughs> listen, I told my last, I called my parents last night or two nights ago. We were at dinner and I was like, if I die tragically, will you please, please be generous with my money as I am with my, like, I don't want it. I sometimes worry that you guys are going to get it and then you'll be weird about it and then you'll just die with it because you'll be like, we're not doing, and I just want you to try to think like me in, in mm-hmm. your generosity with it and helping family and friends. And they go, well, we're not getting anything. You gave it all to Lauren. And I go, because I just trust her to be more generous than you are. And she was like, there's no guarantee she'll give it to us. And I was like, then we got into a fight about my money and what my sister's going to do. It was like this whole thing that, um, so I got to get back in there and and make sure it all goes to like, I don't know, PETA or something. That really pissed them off. (laughs) But but I was, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, we were talking about, um, yeah, I've just been hanging out with my parents so much and it's been really fun we've been having lots of laughs and we oh we watched the martha stewart stewart documentary last night oh what'd you think of that did you watch it yet noah i saw the trailer for it and it actually looks good it's it's good i was like kind of not wanting to watch it because i thought oh here's another documentary produced by the person it's about it's gonna be a fluff piece or what you know and it's 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 very revealing of her and of what she wanted to reveal obviously but it's i thought i felt like it was kind of like the j-lo documentaries where i was like okay well she could have taken a lot of stuff out that i would have been like yeah i I could i could have seen someone taking that out if they were in charge of their own documentary and she didn't she left some stuff in and she surrendered all these letters that she had written her husband who cheated on her that were very revealing and one of them she was like she was flying somewhere after her husband's leaving her and she's telling him i can't eat i can't sleep i'm 40 years old i'm like this should be the prime of my life i'm a beautiful amazing woman and i want to die i hope this plane crashes and it's just like her writing i hope this plane crashes and i i'm instantly getting out my phone to take a picture to send to girls chat because i've sent that exact line like probably a 30 times to girls chat when i'm in a depressive mood and um and my mom goes, Nikki, she sounds like you. And I go, I was just getting my phone out. Like, <laughs> I go, when have I told you that? So it was just, I felt really, it felt really good to see someone um, as, you know, perfect in quotes. Because I didn't ever look at Martha Stewart as perfect. But that's kind of what the theme of the whole movie is, is that she was seen as this perfect person that. Um, yeah, prior I feel like to her, for- like going to jail and stuff she yes was, the pressure which was, was on totally her to be this homemaker perfect james comey james fucking comey who's the reason mm. trump won in the fucking first place because he was the one that did the hillary bullshit and mm-hmm. made us all think but her emails that was all james yeah. comey so he's a part of this and he prosecutes her and she's just they want to get her so bad because you just they explored in the thing and they go because you want to see someone perfect fall people love yep. it Mm-hmm. People love it. And I'll admit, I fucking love when someone who's just had it all seems to not and lose some of it. It's the best feeling in the world. It's a disgusting feeling, but I like that they focus on that because we all have it. And I think that people don't admit that they have it. It comes from a place of inner hate. Yeah, it comes from Where, insecurity. If yeah, you're like secure you with yourself, you don't perfect. care at all what other people are doing or is going on with them. It's just, yeah. it's, you know, when, when when you have, when you feel good about yourself, you really don't. You just don't care. That's such a good sign of someone's mental health when they're not like 
wanting to gossip or relish in someone else's misfortune when they do you you don't like yourself and any mm-hmm. you can't you can't convince me otherwise there's just no way you do and that's okay because i i'm the same way but martha stewart um was uh she's fascinating and she is very masculine very very masculine no there's a part in it where she's talking about like being in relationships and um i forget what they how, what gets into it but they say something like um you know, how did he, it was something about a boyfriend she had. And she was like, you know, we just hang out. I'm not interested in how he's feeling. I'm not interested in how anyone's <laughs> feeling. I'm interested in how, what he thinks. And I'm like, oh, wow. so she's playing the feminine energy. Well, like she, in because she's being in relationships, even though she is a masculine energy completely in mm. her day to day life and her professional life. She, you don't know this about Martha Stewart. She was she started out as a model because oh, really? it was yeah she got scouted as a model or not scouted I always but she auditioned. know her as an old felon. That, I was just she, gonna say you you forget that she was young and looked different like her hair was yeah. different than it God, is. Things was, change. She's beautiful. She she looks like herself though. I think she's, she's aged beautiful. exactly like how she should. Like she's still stunning, but she was a model. Up. Martha Stewart. And then model. don't even don't even sleep on this, Brian. She then goes and says, "I want to work on Wall Street," and is one of the only men at this Wall Street uh, firm or whatever they're called that doesn't even have a women's room where the office is because there's no women who work there. Wow. She's one of the only br- brokers at this. And she is killing it, but then there's like kind of a um a, a stock that really f- falls and fails miserably, and she felt so bad about losing her client's money that she kind of got out of it. And then she got married because she just thought that's what you're supposed to do. And then she had a baby because she thought that's what you're supposed to do. And she said, being a mother did not come naturally to me at all. I thought it was supposed to come naturally. I just didn't really get a lot of affection from my mother. I didn't really care about my daughter's feelings. I My mom didn't hug me enough. I probably didn't hug my daughter enough. And... I just didn't like I felt I re, it really resonated with me because if I was having to be a mother, that's the kind of mother I would be like if I lived in Martha Stewart's day and age where you just that's what you do and there's no other options. I would have totally had a kid and felt like, why do I this isn't this is supposed to come naturally. Why isn't it? I could just see myself like in that a lot. And I'm just so grateful that I live in a time where I can explore other options because I don't think she would have had kids if she didn't live in that time. It Mm -hmm. seemed to be in the way for her. And then she totally rehabbed this house after she got married to this rich guy who is like in publishing music publishing. She got married to him. She rehabbed this house and got into like, and her dad uh, was really stern and strict, alcoholic, abusive, uh, verbally, emotionally, Uh, even though she was his favorite and she learned gardening from him because they would just have to garden um, as kids because they would sell fruits and vegetables to get other food because they didn't have money because they had like six kids and they were poor. So she learned how to garden. And then she also went on a honeymoon for six months with her husband where she toured museums and learned all about um, just different, the European way of doing it. And in the sixties in America, there was no taste like, it was all canned vegetables. It was just like oh putting God. soup cans, like cream of mushroom on top of asparagus. And that was like, or putting a pineapple and like a, a cherry on a chicken. And then that's like, you know, better Fake homes cherry. and gardens, like, like just jello molds of bullshit. Yeah. Like it was just tasteless mm-hmm. garbage, boiling vegetables. Everything was gross. And she went to Europe and was like, I had never tasted an olive that wasn't like green with a maraschino or like one of the a pimento in the middle like she was like it just expanded my horizons and then she started a catering business and just really adapted what she had learned in that six month trip in europe and like started this business and then she like started you know um and then she got a deal with kmart to like do um you know cookware and stuff because she had made enough appearances on TV, a Today Show, different talk shows, and she was kind of getting a name for being like this, you know, aficionado Well, how did she go from being a, oh, starting, I can understand how someone catering. might start a catering company, but then how but do you go from starting a catering, catering for rich people? And then how did that lead to her becoming famous? Uh, she just started being friends with billionaires and rich people, and she started just being like a caterer to the fam- to famous people, so then she started getting TV appearances just by like people, her being in these like kind of circles. She was like, that's how I, I, that's when I learned how to act around billionaires. 
She was like, it's very rare in the 60s to be a billionaire. And I learned how to behave myself. And and she was very popular and just really social and like just knew how to work the system. How and do you act around a billionaire? Did she say how? She didn't say, but I'm guessing it's just you dress immaculately and you uh, are feminine, but kind of a badass and kind of don't give them too much and always leave them wanting more and wondering, does she even like me? And um and not being too sycophantic and yeah i don't know i she's being a challenge like very probably cultured and just like knowing a lot about like food and all that that's mm-hmm. was probably very impressive for she's conversation really well read a oh, right yeah. she wrote journaled all the time she just is so cool and then and then that goes into the whole scandal and then her comeback but when when she started doing things at kmart okay she was like the a-list like most she was kind of like the um anna wintour of home and food right but then she did a deal with kmart and she like lost work because they were like that is we don't want to that's low class kmart's low class and she was like well actually people at kmart um just because you're poor doesn't mean you don't have taste and so she appealed to 75 million people who shop at kmart weekly and and was just uh became a billionaire from it yeah and then she lost a billion dollars after her scandal which was such bullshit. I don't really understand her scandal. A billion dollars? A billion, over a billion dollars. And her the stock scandal, plummeted. Wait, what was the scandal? I don't even remember. Yeah. And so she got a tip to sell some stock that amounted to about, like, I think it was around $30,000 that she saved by selling that stock. So it was like nothing to her. Yeah. She's a billionaire. And, um, and it was, yeah, it was. I was kind of on my phone during that part because I didn't care. But apparently, it was it was a hit job. It was just to take her down, and they pretty much wanted this guy, who she apparently got the tip from, to sell her out. And he was like, "I didn't give her a tip. I didn't." And he could have really. Um, he he went to jail, and they were even going to do a deal with him where he would avoid jail time if he just threw Martha under the bus, and he refused to do it. And um, and so she eventually did go to jail for 152 days. And it's the, I know I, I it sounds like I'm giving away everything in the documentary. I'm not at all like her prison well, stay is fascinating. Reality. It's yeah. Yeah. Every, we know but, what happened, but she's just such a fascinating person and I really admire her. And I think she's, so the I don't scandal know, I just, was I, such I, a I hit I to her like public image that she lost a billion dollars in like profits. Yes. It wasn't like it was taken from her. No, it was her public image. Yeah. Her stock tanked, both like figuratively and literally. And when she did the roast of Bruce Willis that I was on, I think that's the one that she was on. um, Yeah. I didn't really know her whole story. I think I like obviously did research and found out some stuff, but I had a joke about her being like my mom learned so much from her about like how to be cold to her daughter and stuff like that. (laughs) And I think I just assumed that because I didn't think there was any evidence of that when i was researching but damn i was spot on i was like <laughs> oh my, and my mom obviously resents that joke but um because my mom is not well, they have similarities and it's not terrible i would have been a cold mother too and not that my mom was cold it just wasn't like she wasn't as like get on the ground and play with us as my dad was and that's mm. why i've always said if i have kids i need to be with a man who's like ups like wants to play with kids all the time like not in, like pratt. a creepy wit like a chris pratt um, yeah, from Parks yeah. and Rec. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. There's been a couple guys that I've dated where I've been like, okay, I would probably, if if we were together long enough, I'd have your kid because you seem to really want one and you seem to be someone who just wants to be so involved in the day-to-day with kids that it makes sense. And mm-hmm. Chris Convey is one of those people, but I don't, and I've said this to his family or a couple of his family members that have been like, he'd be a great dad. I'm like, there's no question. He would be amazing. He's so playful. He love. he's, there's no one better with kids. Like he has great banter with kids. I'm always like, I don't even know what to say to kids. Yeah. I'm like, do you come here often? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't cool name. I always just say like, I like your name or like, how old are you? Oh, that's a great age. I like your backpack. Thank you. Uh, I just don't even know what to, I literally am out of stuff to yeah. say to them. It gets so awkward, but Chris is so creative when it talk, comes to talking to kids. But I'm just like, I don't want him. I'd be jealous. I'd be like, hang out with me. I don't want you playing with kids. Like, I like, I want to play with Chris. So that's why I've said, yes, I know it'd be a good dad, but I don't, I don't yeah, want to It might change if it's your kid, because then it would be like, he's playing with an extension of you and something that you mm-hmm. care about. 
not interested. <laughs> not interested in an extension of me either. I just, uh, I don't know. I've, after, after hearing what my girlfriends have been through giving birth and being pregnant and afterwards, I know that you completely heal and you go back to normal. You don't go Gotta back to normal. Say, well, you eventually. Go Maybe like Someday. a year. A year. Yeah, a year. But it's, I'm talking years. And I've seen my sister have three and she's like, you know, her, you would never even know it from like, like my body is made to like, if by anything like my sister, I'd be fine. It just, I don't think it's even for that amount of time, even if it go completely back to normal, it seems like it really sucks. And I, I, I just like major shout out to everyone that puts their body through that. And like, and you think you know what it's going to be, but you are not told everything. You can read all the books and you can watch all the TikToks and you can watch all the reels and you can get advice from friends. But Noah, would you say that like you were completely informed of everything that would happen? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and you looked <laughs> and into everything, not. right? Like you thought you knew everything, right? I mean, I had an idea of what I wanted in terms of like my pregnancy and delivery and stuff. But like there's definitely not enough information because there's no template for what happens it's it's all unique to the person yeah and i don't want to i don't want to get that surprise of like what what's it gonna be like for me like what are my nipples gonna look like will yeah, she it's latch a, it's a will there be a commitment duck yes will I, I, it's just like there <laughs> are some things in life things. yeah i just don't i'm not interested in having <laughs> I'm not or like will my feet swell like Sarah Lena's foot wasn't fitting in her shoe like I just don't it and I know that's like that's Nikki that's a small potatoes and they look like big ones to me but that's small <laughs> potatoes for what you get out of it which is a child but I would also argue like I'm trying to make a comparison in my set and it's not working that having a kid to me is the same as like being an astronaut and like I, yeah, when I was a little girl, like everything was possible. Like I could be an astronaut, not really b because I'm not good at math, but like if I worked hard enough, I probably could have been an astronaut in some like worked in, but it seemed too hard. Mm -hmm. And yes, going to space is amazing, but it's too hard to get there. So I'm not going to do it. And for some reason, people can grasp that when you talk about a career. But when it comes to like a kid, people are like, no, you just do it. And then it's fine. But it's like, no, I get it. It's like amazing at the finish line, but I'm just not willing to put in that work. I just, I, I can't. Right, Like it's just as hard to become an astronaut as it is to be a parent, but no one's coming at you like, oh, but you'll go to space one day. You know, you should like that. Don't no one's you want to go to space? It'd yeah. be amazing. You're missing out on going to space. And it's like, <laughs> I or you understand like any kind when of you job. have your own rocket Don't you want to age faster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, I, it, but I, I just think that that's an interesting point that people just kind of negate all of the bullshit you go through to become a mom because the mom part is so worth it. And it is to some people, but to me, it is not. Even mm -hmm. though I know that I would fucking love it and it would be the best thing I've ever done and I would never regret it and ever, I would always say it was the greatest thing I've ever done because I've literally never heard someone not say that. It's still not worth it. And, and it's, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around that sometimes, I think. Uh, we got to go to break. We'll be back after this. Okay, I have to ask a question. Please, no, I ask a I question. Feel, I feel like we've made it in long enough to the show where I can... Uh, ask you this i need like a little bit of relationship help <laughs> and i could have texted yeah. you guys relationship but... help <laughs> wow so i have just been a raging bitch for like a week and it's definitely okay. hormonal i can't control it it's like beyond yeah. mm -hmm. and um i just like i feel like the hormones have subsided and i was wondering when you guys have something with your partners how do you reset and go back to zero? Because I feel like if I'm just all of a sudden cheery in the kitchen, he's going to commit me. <laughs> because right. You were just a bitch five minutes ago. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I don't I have know. a good one for this. All right. You have to fucking eat some shit. You have, to, you have to go, hey, can I just address the elephant in the house, which is me being in a really bad mood this week? I just take up accountability. Be like, I, I don't know what's going on with me, but I have been really difficult to be around and I can't imagine what it's felt like on your end dealing with it. And I had literally no control over it. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. I put you through that. 
but I am feeling embarrassed about it. I'm feeling like hungover from it. And I just want you to know, like, I'm really sorry for what you went through dealing with it. Like, just empathize with his point of view without making too many excuses for yourself. And just, you have to address it. You can't just like change back to like, I'm nice. Because like, when that happens to me, at least, like where someone just goes from being shitty to being nice, I'm just like, Oh, no, no. Now I get to be shitty because you're in a safe space. Now I get to be the one that's going <laughs> to make you feel what I just felt because I, d- I need an apology. I need an acknowledgement of what I went through. You're like and Keely's character from Fargo when she, you know, when she's like bleeding and she's making pancakes and she's like, you want some Bisquick? And it's like, you're yeah. bleeding. You just Oh, my God. Up. That's such a good. Yeah, that's exactly that scene. I just, you know, I've been there before, too, Noah, where I've I've just like. I think we all have where you just like are acting like a fucking raging bitch. And even when you, Mm -hmm. I've talked about it before on the podcast, you're saying something so mean or so shitty or so passive aggressive and you know, you're going to have to apologize for it at some point. Mm -hmm. It's not now. It ain't, it feels too good to coming out, but you know, you know, you've just created a job for yourself that is going to be way more painful than it is to whatever. Like it's, it's going to be so hard to do, but you have to do the hard thing and just like, apologize and well, then it will was... come back and help you so much farther down the road because it will buy it will show him how to do the same thing i have oh, a yeah, slight adjustment it. to that i i think it, okay like, there's was, was there an acute incident where you did something specifically like so over the top bitchy that that needs to be addressed or is it just a general malaise of bitchiness over the course of a week it was like you know what like there's nothing specific that can be pointed to but like i'm definitely being a piece of shit Oh, I think a lot of it is um, just my tone in the way that I answer or try to control the situation. So, and, yeah. If that's the case, I don't think an apology is necessarily fully warranted. I think kind you can do kind of like a half apology by going up to them and thanking them for being so understanding while you've been such a bitch over the past That's good. Week. That's oh, nice. That's, like, oh, thank you for, that feels I, a little bit easier than the apology, to be honest. The apology is a little heavy. If you did something yeah. really like in, like in specific, like you stabbed him with a knife and he was bleeding, then you would yeah. apologize for that. <laughs> but if you're just right. like, yeah. I want to stab you with a knife and it was just kind of like, was that a joke? Was that not a joke? Then I think you go, you, you give him a hug and you go, I'm just so thankful that you can, you know, understand what I'm such okay, a but bitch. Th- I feel like that is me all is all is me being all of a sudden nice, and he would just be like, "Are you?" But you're like, thanking are him. You you're thanking him. You're addressing it. I you're think addressing you need it. to say the word an- acknowledge. I acknowledge that I have been not fun to be around, and okay. I am working. Yeah, I am good. working on it, and I truly did not have control over it, and I am embarrassed. If you are, you know, like I am embarrassed for how I don't have control over it, and it's something I don't want to do again to you. And it probably will happen again because I'm a flawed person. But thank you for loving me and being with me and knowing that this is a part of me and tolerating it um, as I navigate what it's like to have all these feelings coming up that are making me not treat you the way I want to. Yeah. Final thought. I, I think you do. I think trying to... F- to apologize without saying the word I'm sorry or ap- I apologize is shitty. I think people need to hear it. I think people need to hear it. They need to yeah. feel like they need to. F- okay. At least uh, for with Chris, I just feel like it's really bought me a lot to say like, man, thinking about like your side of things. Like if I even say that, like thinking how it must feel to have me be like such a brat for the past couple of days i'm just so sorry i put you through that like just give him some grasp of you feeling what he felt or acknowledging that like okay. you put yourself in his shoes so i agree yeah. with that then but i i think maybe then it's a tone thing because like the the way that you're saying it feels so heavy and i don't think this is such a heavy thing to be addressing like it feels very like um therapy speak heaviness yeah. do it when you're both in like kind of a fun mood and just say hey i just want to say like this is really nice and i know that this has not been my general tone for the past couple weeks and i know i i don't want you to feel like you're crazy for thinking i've been off because i have been off or just like i think that's where we get into so much muck in relationships is just not 
is just acting like something didn't happen or like moving on from it or like now it's fine or like just there needs to be more accountability or like just more just more self-awareness just like being like man i can be shitty to be like sometimes i'm like chris it's awesome that you love me because i am really a lot like i know i'm great in all these ways but like not other got other guys couldn't do what you do in terms of put up with me like make him feel special for yeah, what i don't say that for enough the, for sure I think that, mm, and hard. i think we need to feel it a little more i don't think i feel it enough sometimes and i'm sometimes i am struck by like wow i am like crazy like i put chris through some like weird te- <laughs> not even tests i don't mean to but like i'll drop like a bunch of feelings about myself that he's like what like doesn't even know what to do with i just hand him a junk drawer of wires and broken things and batteries and i'm just like take it and make it art like i just like t- give him my shit and then tell him to do do something with it and he he's just like standing there holding my pile of shit and like i feel and then i'm like i'm gonna go take a nap you sort through this mm. and mm-hmm. i think that i when i acknowledge like thank you so much for being the person who loves me and get and even gets to see the side where i get to let myself be this way around you like you're so strong and special i think that is helpful or a blowjob <laughs> yeah just start going up to him and rubbing his pants while he plays the guitar <laughs> yeah. that would just delay everything i think i have to just rip the bandaid off and just apologize walk into the yeah. kitchen wearing a scream mask and then take off the scream mask and be like, that's how I was and this oh, is how I am. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's actually good. a good idea. Try that. Yeah, and then you can stab a, him and it'll make sense. Do a, uh, a, a dance performance. <laughs> yeah, do, go, go into get a life-size cage and do a dance with an adult that is the old <laughs> you or the oh, new yeah. you. And you can come to terms <laughs> with the two versions of yourself via dance. <laughs> And make it kind of uncomfortable sexually yes. for everyone who watches it. Um, yeah, this is a v- interesting topic. And I just was, I'm again, I hate to keep saying I'm working on a bit about it, but I'm, I am like, there was something I wanted to work on about how relationships, like if in long-term relationships where you know you're going to be together forever, you always check in. There's, I don't know anyone in a long-term relationship where it's good all the time. You check in and you go, how are you guys? We've been good. We've, it's been a rough patch. It is never steady. It is always changing. You think you're really good and you dip back down. Like there's, it's, it's never, it's never always great in a long term relationship. It's just not gonna be. You're gonna, you're gonna hit rough air. There's gonna be turbulence always. And, if you it's think this- it's, oh, it's 100% good 100% of the time, your partner is probably suffering. Yeah, honestly, oh, I yeah. just can't imagine anyone being in a relationship where it's just smooth sailing the whole time. Like you check because we all have that whether or not you're in a long term relationship. You, we all have a married friend. How you go? How are you and John? Oh, uh, we've been good. Like it's it's always like there's it's it's always a fucking gamble. You never know because and and so often it's just OK, we're fine. Like we're not thriving. We're not all over each other. We're not deeply in love. We're just fine. And or you're we've been really good. He's not hitting me anymore. Like it's just bare minimum. Like you know, like in a in a long term relationship when someone's like, we have been so connected lately. You know, he only has one mit- mistress now. Like it's always just like something. It's it's so it's never really that great when people talk about a long term relationship being amazing. We've never been so connected. Um, it's 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 just hard. But I. I do think um, last night in the Martha Stewart documentary, um, it was pretty much kind of, I guess, the narrative was established that she, her relationship failed. He cheated on her because she was too career oriented. And Mm. the, you know, um, documentarian (laughs) interviewing her. That's yeah. Well, it was, it was kind of like, oh, it's your fault, Martha. Right. Um, but the documentary documentary and whatever that word is asked her what's more important a career or a marriage and she's like i don't know that's the question and i just go career 
<laughs> it's like very quickly. I'm like, who gives a f- marriage is, and I really believe that because I believe happy wife, happy life. Like if I'm happy in my career, I'll have a good marriage. If I have a good marriage and not a career, fuck that. I don't want. I I I will not be a, in a, a good partner. Career is com- career for me is baby. Career is. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like yeah. your career is your purpose. A I lot don't think of times. you compare so, career to marriage. You compare, you compare career to baby. I think it's a better comparison, but I also think a relationship, like when I'm Chris just got done doing two huge career things and we, I did not see him at all. Our relationship was just, uh, it was non-existent. And I understood that. I was like, I, I would never expect you to be around right now. Like you're working two shows. That would be insane. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like, he had to choose one or the other. And he keeps saying like, and I've been a bad boyfriend the past two months. And I'm like, you haven't been because it's, you haven't been a boyfriend. Like it's, I don't expect you to be good right now. Like that would be crazy for me to expect that. So it, stop saying you've been a bad boyfriend because that's the, that's the deal we have. Um, but I, I would say yes, relationships are important, but like no one's ever been like our friendships are a career more important. And it's like, it's always about like a marriage, like marriage has to be the most, that is the, ev- that is the goal for every woman and every man. And it's like, I just don't think that it can be. I do think a career is more important than a marriage. Do I think friendships are more important than the career? Probably. I'd rather have, re- I think relationships are more important than a career, but a marriage. No, sir. Frequently Sorry. the career is the longest term relationship you'll ever have. I hope so. It was there before your marriage, and it might be there after. Well, after meeting and talking to Al Michaels, veteran of sports casting, legend, the other night, and he's 80 years old, I know that that man is so fucking rapid fire, so with it, slightly hard of hearing, but not really. We were in a really loud restaurant. There is mm-hmm. nothing different from talking to him or my dad, who's in his 60s. And that's, a you know, 80 is, is up there. Yeah. He is so with Joe it Biden. because he works. He's still working. That's you right. You got to stay active. You got to stay talking. You got to stay involved and with it. I really, I was just, I was blown away by him. I was, I was almost nervous to talk to him because I'm like, I, you know, like, I don't, I get nervous around older people because I don't want to baby them. I didn't have to do that with him at all. He's a no. fucking, there was nothing elderly about him at all. When and you, it's because he's, 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 he's still active. Had a career, who's been in the same career for 40 years. They're always sharp and like with it. But then when you meet someone who's been in the same marriage for 40 years, they can barely talk. <laughs> That's very funny. There's something there. <laughs> All right, we got to go. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We're about to do an intrusive thoughts episode. If you want to get um, in on that, they are paywalled, but it's not that much. And you join um, Big Money Players uh, Diamond Club. Diamond Club? Is that right? Diamond Players Club. Diamond Players Club. I'm DPC. a member. And you get all of our episodes commercial free. Plus, you get um, content every month that's uh, that no one else gets. So we're about to record that. And we'll see you on that. But we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Nikki Laser Podcast. Uh, on Thursday. See you then. Bye. Don't be careful.